Come on, Cassie. I know this is great after hours club. You've been on your feet all day. No thanks, Joe. I have a day job too, you know. You sure I can't give you a lift? I'd rather face the markers. All of these places. Good morning. So, well, we have a C2, C3 fracture dislocation. Uh, the head was unstable and there was a sudden deceleration injury. As in your old hanging, where the head just pops. That's not what's interesting. What's interesting is we also have a crushed larynx. It's just floppy. You're trying to tell me two kids did this? I 
It's just got a statement from an eyewitness that said they saw the kids attack her. Can't you cover her face? Her name's Cassie Phillips. He used to go into her place for a uh, nightcap. She always had the latest jokes, nice sense of humor. I always told her she ought to uh, audition for one of those comedy joints. All the more reason I would think you'd want to see those little bastards put away. Mm. Oh, ugh. don't pass out on me, love joy. Take a look at the size of those hematomas. Now, you think either one of those two kids could have done that? Shit, you really think a cop did this? Why not? She knew me, she knew a lot of cops. What's the use? Let's go. I think I need some fresh air. You must have been so afraid, Cassie. Then you saw a cop. Close that call. <laughs> <You're> kidding. <laughs> What's the matter with this light? It's quite broken or something. Relax. Sorry. Where'd he come from? I don't know. I don't know. All right. What seems to be the trouble, officer? Oh, no. I think he wants you to go with him. Before? I don't know. Look, you just better cooperate, all right? Tickets, my insurance is going to go up. Send him in. Have a seat, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, I've been going over your report. It seems that you automatically assumed that it was a police officer instead of some lunatic son of a bitch dressed up like a cop. He didn't kill the girl. He wanted a witness. Well, there you are. Obviously, someone trying to discredit the police force. I mean, it fits my profile for it not to be a cop. All the same, I think we ought to take a look at our own people. I'd like to have the police psychologist do a rundown on cops that have been uh, under mental disturbance, uh, uh, attempted suicide, uh, under extreme emotional stress. Sure. Why don't we just test the whole damn force while we're at it? Otherwise, we're looking for a white man well over six feet tall, wears a police uniform, doesn't have an alibi. I don't know where to start to look, Commissioner. Listen, I want you to keep this within the department. Keep it quiet. For as long as we can. He'll kill again. He enjoys killing. You know, Lieutenant, you seem to know a hell of a lot about this guy. Tell me something. When is the last time you had a mental test? Any time, Commissioner. As a matter of fact, didn't you try to shoot yourself a couple of years back? Gun went off. The gun went off. Exactly 10 days after your partner was killed in the line of duty, your gun just happens to discharge all by itself. Now, you haven't been on an even keel ever since, even now. You don't smile very much.
my club. Ow. A drunk driver, now this musician, all killed by a uniformed police officer? Well, we've got to do something about it, and fast. Why did this have to happen just before an election? If we downplay it, we get accused of protecting the police. If we go all the way, then uh, PBA and a couple others say we're weakening law enforcement. Forget that, Jerry. We're dealing with a deranged person here. I guarantee he's going to kill again. And for the time being, I want this kept quiet. We'll begin an internal investigation. For now, no public announcements that a cop might be involved. Nothing like that. Right, Jerry. I didn't think we were gonna see each other again. Well, I see you're on the news the end of each night, just before I shut off the lights. How romantic. Gina, this isn't about romance. It's about murder. Thank you. People have to be warned. Most people, they respect the uniform. They'll do anything the cop tells them, including take a walk up a dark alley. Who's he killing? Pushers? Hustlers? Innocent people. Jesus. Maniac cop? How's that for a tag? I knew I could count on you to sensationalize it the best way. Now you gotta do it. Make it bigger than AIDS. It's the only way to get City Hall off their ass. Are you ready to go on the line on this? Be quoted directly? I am ready to hand you an exclusive on this. But I want you to break it on your late news show tonight. Okay. I'll need a backup on every detail. Names of the witnesses, specifics from the... You'll find everything you need right there. McRae, remember, I owe you one. Hey, you don't owe me anything. God damn it! Why can't that son of a bitch Pike control his own men? You want McRae in here? Hell no. Last thing I need is to be accused of a cover-up. Issue a statement saying I didn't know about the connection between these killings. And say I'm setting up an inquiry board headed by a group of independent psychologists. What about also saying something nice about the police? I mean, the average cop on the street, because they're the one that's going to take the heat for this. That's their lookout. What about McCray? Oh, we'll let him handle the investigation. If he fails, I'll bust him. If he succeeds, I'll commend him. And uh, six or eight months later, cut his balls off. This reporter was informed by a source within the New York Police Department of attempts by the Homicide Division to suppress facts regarding three recent homicides. Facts and witnesses to these murders point unmistakably to a uniformed police officer. I repeat, a uniformed New York cop has been seen in the commission of the brutal killings occurring on the streets of the city after dark. The questions this station wants answered. Why has Commissioner Pike withheld these facts? And does the mayor know what's going on in his city? How can the public defend themselves if they're unaware that one of New York's finest may indeed be a psychopath whose intent is to kill them rather than protect them? 
Tomorrow on The Morning Show, we will have an interview with Detective Lieutenant Frank McRae, who is in charge of the investigation and who is ordered not to speak to the press. shoot a cop nowadays he's got one hell of an excuse you believe that she thought he was the fucking maniac look we received over 700 letters accusing individual police officers look councilman the cop gives you a parking ticket so what do you do naturally you write in a letter accusing him of being a killer right she was just have to have an eye four weeks before i would die hey look we're all in trouble here captain tourism is off by 38 percent this nut must be caught he's costing the taxpayers millions every day Ripley, if you can't handle this, why don't you put in for early retirement and step down, huh? No way, Commissioner. I'm gonna nail this bastard. Be sharp. Now we one step ahead of him. If I stake out to Beck and Soul, he strikes the east side. He may be getting information from inside the department. <laughs> that means he is one of us. No, you were on duty tonight. Yeah, well, with all the flu going around, they had to put a lot of us on overtime. Always at night? It worries me when you work so much at night. It worries me, too. You don't talk about it much. When I come home, I want to forget. Makes me feel left out, Jack. You used to talk to me. Look, you're the one that dropped out of the therapy. I was willing to go and I was willing to pay the bills. So it's all my fault now, is it? I did everything I could to hold this marriage together. You talk like it's already over. Yeah, well, it's not enough to talk. You have to listen, too. I suppose that's why you're taking so much overtime, to get away from me. Unless it's something else. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Sometimes you wake up screaming like you can't breathe. Sometimes I get afraid that you might hurt me in your sleep. Have I ever hurt you? I know it's wrong to be afraid of my own husband, but I... Now, why couldn't you say that to the therapist? Why couldn't you simply say, I'm afraid of him and I don't know why? Oh, Jack, please. Don't go out tonight. Stay with me. Now, how can I? I'm on the duty roster. I'll make it up to you over the weekend. We'll, uh, we'll go for a ride in the country. We'll go on up to Terryton, like... Hey, don't pull away from me. I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening to me. I... I don't like being alone till all hours. I hear things. I think I hear things. Look, there's enough locks on the doors. And you've got a gun, and you know how to use it. I'm going to fix that for you. Look, um, if I get off early tonight, I'll try not to wake you. You can wake me up. Maybe I'm just sleeping too much, you know? They say that can be depressing to a person. You know, too much sleep. Be careful now. 
You say that every night. He went out again, didn't he? Who is this? Why do you keep calling me? Why does Jack keep killing people? Is he gonna do it again tonight? Why do you keep doing this to me? Hey, Jack. Oh, hey, buddy. Nah, I'll fix it myself. Did you follow me? I thought... I was afraid that you were... God. I didn't want you to find out this way. I... I wanted to tell you, but I, I didn't know how. Just don't come near me. You have every right to hate us both. But let me just try and explain. I don't want to hear another word. Because I'll kill you both. Ellen, don't point that thing. Just don't point that thing. Let, it, let her go. Let her go. Good in here. Let's see 
see what other damage you've done. Decided where you're going to settle down after you retire? You uh, still thinking about Florida? It's about your wife. She called you to complain about her trouble. Thought she'd be going to a lawyer or something like that. So the two of you haven't been getting along? Ripley. Look, Captain Ripley. Captain, since when is my personal life any of your business? Since your wife was found dead in the motel room. In a sleaze bag motor in on 11th Avenue. With a throat slit from ear to ear. No, you gotta be wrong. You wanna see the pretty pictures? She ran out. I, I thought she went back home. I admit you with that. I, I tried to stop her, but she had a gun. Tormund Forrest, before you say anything else, I better read you your rights. Good afternoon. We are pleased to announce an arrest has been made in the series of unfortunate killings that have been plaguing this city in recent weeks. Patrolman Jack W. Forrest, Jr. has been charged with the murder of his wife as well as with the killings of three citizens. Rather than being a deranged maniac, as described in certain tabloids, we believe Patrolman Forrest is perfectly aware of the nature of his crime and is competent to stand trial. You saving your reviews? Never saw these before. Well, what about this? Your wife's diary. She wrote, I now believe my husband may be doing these murders. Is that why you followed her? Is that why you shut her up for That's her? not true. You got an alibi for last Wednesday night, the preceding Friday, huh? I was home. Well, come on, Forrest. If uh, you were home, uh, your wife would not have suspected you. All right, I was, I was seeing somebody. I'll talk to my client now. Alone. Counselor Allen. We have read him his Miranda's, and he elected to make a statement. That's inadmissible. He really did admit that he was in that motel room in the presence of the victim. And that's enough. Now you two guys, out of here. As you move, Counselor. Counselor, we intend to have this suspect appear in the lineup for the witnesses first thing tomorrow morning. Good day, sir. trying to make me the fall guy. Everybody's screaming for blood, and all of a sudden, I'm it. I'm certain you had no control over what happened. Call it uh, irresistible impulse. That's a legal defense. Uh, better yet, maybe you don't even remember committing the crimes. Uh, blackouts, momentary lapses of memory. What are you talking about? I'm not crazy. I didn't do it. You were seeing a therapist on a regular oh, basis. Oh, come on. A marriage counselor. I got a witness, okay? Somebody else who was there. I don't want to bring her into this unless there's no other way. Well, pal, you need all the help you can get. It's going to ruin her career. Let's give it to the end of the week. If they don't find the real killer by then, I'll name her. Yeah, so I told my kids, you see a cop, you crossed it the other side of the street. I see a cop, I'm out of here. I've seen plenty of my friends murdered by cops, shot in the back, shot when they didn't have a gun or a knife, claiming the suspect had a shiny object. 
You know, cops like killing. That's why they're cops. Yeah. Who's gonna be next, huh? Cops like you to be scared of them. That's what makes them men. Real men. Because without the uniform, what are they? I'm not scared. They respected cops in my day, otherwise they hit you in the head with their billy. They didn't take no cop, no, they were the law. Nowadays, I guess, uh, they gotta shoot you to get respect. Nobody gives no crap to the cops no more since this crazy cop come along. You see a cop coming now, you get out of the way. And there ain't much crime no more. Tomorrow, hey, listen. About 18 years back, I had a case where this guy made it look like a psychopath was at work. So what does he do then? He goes in and he kills his wife, and it looks like it's one of the serial killings. Jack's been set up to take the heat off the real psycho. <laughs> Are you going to tell me you think this creep is that smart? He's a cop. Maybe even a detective. Fuck you. Come on, Ripley, why not? Every detective keeps his old uniform hanging in mothballs. It's the one thing you never get rid of. Now, let me tell you, Phil. If Jack had an alibi, he would have come across with it by now. Jack is protecting someone. Whoever it is, he doesn't want them to get involved. And the killer knows who it is. And you're a cop. Fucking A, I'm a cop. What the fuck are you? Fuck you. Size, your description, uh, your personnel file. He's getting his information from inside the department. And of course, your uh, sex life. I'm telling you, nobody knew about that. Your girlfriend must have told somebody, Jack. She's the only one that can give us that connection that puts her in danger. I'm telling you, she can take care of herself. She outshoots me every time we go to the range. She's on the force? You know her. Teresa Mallory. Congratulations. So what kept secret? Yeah, well, not well enough, according to you. Where do I find her? She's on duty tonight. Hmm. How are you doing, beautiful? <laughs> it all depends. Would you like a lift someplace? I feel pretty much at home right here. Could I interest you in something else? You want to be a little more specific? You wouldn't be a cop, would you? <laughs> you got it, mister, if you asked the jackpot question. Now, why don't you run along home to your wife and kids like a good little boy? Yeah, it's just what I was going to do. But I'll be thinking of you, baby. Can't arrest you for that. Ciao, baby.
It couldn't have just been a bulletproof vest. I hit him in the head at least twice. Just run me a tab, will you? Okay. Thanks. Just look at the marks on your throat. I'm telling you, Frank, his hands were so big, and they felt like ice, even through his gloves. He wasn't breathing. Yeah, well, we won't put that in our report, huh? Why did you come looking for me? Uh, you were Jack's only witness. You had to disappear. He, uh, he speak to you, say anything? No, no, not a sound. Last call, you want anything else? Uh, yeah, yeah one more round, doubles. You're trying to get me drunk. No, 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 I'm just gonna stash away someplace for a few days for safekeeping. Why can't I go home? Oh, come on, if he knew where you were assigned to work, he sure as hell knows where you live. Well, how could he? You must have told somebody at work about your relationship. Oh, come on, come on. Jack was deliberately set up. Somebody phoned his wife to follow him. Now, who did you tell? I guess you know Sally Noland. Should I? Well, sure. She's been on the force for 20 years. She's like a den mother to all of us. You know, she wears that leg brace. Oh, yeah, yeah. She uses a cane, yeah. sure. Yeah, that's her. Yeah. Her father's a cop. I know. She has a fixture down headquarters. She's been there so long, you hardly notice her anymore. What's this? Key to my apartment, 4E. I want you to lock yourself in there. I'll call before I come back. So you know it's me. I'll ring twice, hang up, mm -hmm. ring once again. Don't answer the phone for anybody else. Wait, I, I thought you were going to keep me company. I'll phone for a cab. I don't want you out in the streets. I'm going to stop down headquarters. I have a feeling Miss Nolan will be haunting the joint. McCray, what'd you do to your hand? Cut myself shaving. Uh, sign me in, will you? Yeah, sure. Came at a very bad time. The computer is down. <laughs> How did we ever police this town without a computer, huh? You requested information. You'll have to fill out this form, and I'll process it in the morning. You are, uh, uh, you have a pen? Thanks. Probably have a hard time writing with this, Anna. Got 11 stitches tonight. You know, we really should know each other. We've probably been passing each other in the halls for years. We do have one friend in common. Who's that? Officer Mallory. Teresa. She had a close call this evening. Why? What happened? Well, she was working out of cover of ice. Ran into a psycho. It's a mess. How is she? She's okay. Oh, thank Jesus for that. She's a fine girl, that one. I knew you'd be relieved to hear she was okay. Yeah, we should, uh, we should all have us a beer together sometime, get to know each other. Sure. We'll all be inseparable. How's that form? I'll tell you the truth, it's not very important, man. Forget it. I'm gonna get that computer fixed. I'm glad we finally got to say hello.
I know it would be safe if you put the girl away, but this way is even better. Now they think they got the guilty man, so that way they're gonna let their guard down and you'll be free to get to the mayor and the commissioner and put an end to this. I knew you had anger in you, Matt, but, but I thought it would be the dealers and the junkies and all the human garbage that you'd be cleaning the city up. Not all them poor people just minding their business. What's got into you, Matt? What's changed you so? I said that I'd stick by you, and I will. But you got to stop this killing. Just only save it for those that did wrong to you. Jumping, Matt. Matt, where are you? I need you, Matt. You need me. Come back. Take it easy. What are you doing? I had to take a leak. You always take a leak with a gun in your hand? It's a good way to blow your balls off. Oh. You scared me. Wearing a uniform. Yeah, nowadays everybody's packing a gun. I don't blame you. I should get hazard pay with this uniform. Yeah. You got yourself killed back there. Those timbers are ready to break. This place is going to be demolished in a couple of weeks. Yeah, the whole city's going to hell. You can't take a pee anywhere anymore. Here you are. More about Cordell and you got time to read. He was my hero. Yeah, Matt believed in the old saying, shoot first and ask questions later. He was kind, though. Gentle enough if you got to know him. Did you? Well, I hate to admit it, but he used to like to come in here and look at his clippings, just like you're doing. He kind of liked being a celebrity. It's a real shame about what happened to him. It was a crime what those politicians did to him, putting him in Sing Sing with all those criminals he'd been chasing all those years. It was like handing him a death sentence. Yeah, they say he violated people's rights. Uh... I guess even killers got rights, huh? They murdered him. Those bastards down in City Hall. He had no kids, no wife. I guess a 100% cop like him, he had no time for personal life, huh? Here, Clance, thanks. You can put these away. You're wrong about that. He had himself a real nice girl. I think he would have gotten married if it hadn't been for all that trouble. You know who she was? Sure. He brought her in here one time to show off for her. She wasn't uh, much to look at, uh, but nice. And, of course, a cop. <laughs> she must have taken it pretty hard, huh? Worse than that. Right after he was convicted, the poor soul threw herself out a window trying to kill herself. It's a terrible thing for a Catholic girl to do. She crippled herself. Thanks, Clancy. Yeah, they don't make cops like him anymore. He was one of a kind. He still is. What was that? Nothing. Forget it.
Come on in. Boy, this is great. I get to meet the mayor. Now, what did I do to deserve this honor? Detective McCray was in your file room asking a lot of questions earlier today. Uh, how, how did you know that? Oh, we keep an eye on him. So what do you want to know about? Cordell. We talked about Cordell. You remember Cordell. Yeah, what about Cordell? He's dead and buried. Well, maybe it's not my place to say, but... Uh, you threw him to the wolves. Yeah, he was after those mafia big shots with the big connections, and uh, so you got rid of him. Court found him guilty. Aren't you worried about your job, Clancy? No, no, not really. You see, I retire a week from Tuesday. So that I can tell it to your face, Mr. Mayor. You murdered the guy. Now, will there be anything else? Go on, get out. Sure. But like I say, nice to meet you. We'll be interrogating the suspect for about half an hour. Okay, call me when you're through. We know who the killer is. Did you tell the DA? Well, we tried to, but he wouldn't believe us. You won't either. You ever hear of a detective, Matt Cordell? Yeah, he's before my time, but, you know, he was alleged real trigger-happy, right? He died in jail. I suppose he didn't. Suppose he's back. Only now he kills innocent people. Yeah, but how could he get out of prison alive? We're gonna find out. Tomorrow morning, I've got an appointment with the chief medical examiner up at Sing Sing, Dr. Gruber. You know, why don't, uh, why don't you continue this questioning for a while alone? Rough him up a little bit. Thanks. Officer Mallory will continue the interrogation till I get back. Right.
What are you, down? I gotta get you out of this building. Come on. Well, what about you? If they see you with that gun, you're gonna get shot. Don't worry about me. where I can see them. Back up against the wall. Hey, hold on. I, I didn't do any of this. You broke out of your cell. You killed them all. It wasn't me. It was somebody else. Yeah. Shut up! He's still here. You're letting him get away. Nobody's getting away. I'm calling for backups. Ah! Ah! Don't even try. Okay, okay. Listen. I didn't do any of this. Sure you didn't. Put your guns over there. All right. On your face, both of you. Hey, man, we're going after him? You heard him. He didn't do it. Therese, come on, let's go. McCray, Sally Nolan, nine others. Somehow he got out and killed them all. He was sending a message to me. He wants me. What's Jack Forrest got against you? It's not Forrest, it's Cordell. Cordell's dead. Maybe he isn't. The way he looked at me after that sentencing, he knew I pulled all the strings. He knew it. He won't be satisfied till he's got me. appointment at Sing Sing. Sure, walk into a prison with half the police force out looking for you. You're a brave man. No, no, not brave. Scared shitless. Okay, unless we can prove that Cordell is still alive, it's gonna be my ass. Yeah, we've got an 8 a.m. meeting with your Dr. Gruber. We're a little early. Yeah, name? McCray. Detective Frank McCray. Uh, uh. Okay, the doctor's office is around back to, to your left. All right, thank you. You're welcome. You knew Matt Cordell? There weren't many like that. I did the autopsy on him. Now, look, the authorities knew that something like that could happen to him. Why didn't they prevent it? Oh, he wouldn't allow it. I mean, he refused to be in isolation. Uh, I guess he... <laughs> Didn't want to admit that he was afraid. What do you do in a case like that? What do you mean? Well, when they're all cut up like that. <sighs> this is no ordinary mortician's home. I mean, we're not into cosmetic approaches here. When a prisoner dies, it's not our job to make him look good again for his family. We stitch up the parts. 
and put him into a wooden box, and we bury him. Is that what happened to Matt Cordell? I don't have to look at my records. Would you mind? Hmm. Mostly they just go to Potter's Field. Oh. Here's Cordell's records. This body was claimed by a woman. Can I see that? We both know Miss Noland. I think before this goes any further, I'd like to see some identification, Detective McRae. Something with a photograph on it. Detective Lieutenant McRae died early this morning. He was murdered. He was murdered by the same man that killed more than half a dozen people at police headquarters last night. Well, I haven't gotten to my morning paper yet. I want you to know all the lure of details. If I would have murdered a bunch of officers, the last place I'd come is to a penitentiary. Don't bullshit us. You know who did those killings. How could I know? Cordell wasn't dead. And then you saved him. Answer me. Look, he was a fine detective. He had a lot of friends. Everyone knew if we put him back in the prison community, they'd just attack him again. There was no way he could survive. So when they brought him up here, more dead than alive, a policewoman convinced me to do the decent thing. Like remove him from the prison mortuary alive? He wasn't exactly alive. He had severe brain damage. I was certain that he was legally dead. I was telling the truth when I signed that death certificate. There's no way he could function as a human being again. Read the newspapers, Doc. Get out of my office. Now. You never came here. I'm not going to pick up that phone. This never happened. There's no end to your decency, is there, Doctor? What did I do wrong? You should have seen him on the operating table, cut to pieces. I know the system screwed him. The politicians put him in prison and the inmates did the rest, and now you're trying to ruin my life and my career. We're not trying to ruin anybody. We just want to bury Matt Cordell once and for all. Get out of here. Go away. Here you are, doctor. Put this on. What are you talking about? You know, it's St. Patrick's Day. But go away. The mayor and police commissioner will be there. Yeah, along with 5,000 cops. You know, I bet Cordell used to love walking in that parade every year he was on the force. Yeah, well, whatever he loved, he hates now. And so this year's St. Patrick's Day Parade continues on schedule, despite speculation that the parade may have been canceled due to fear of violence. Authorities report scores of death threats against the police, plus threats of bombings along the parade route. But this has not deterred a record crowd for turning out for New York's 50th annual St. Patrick's Day Parade. What a parade it is. Public outrage over the continued killings by the so-called maniac cop have brought many hostile New Yorkers to New York's Fifth Avenue today. Police security forces and the special bomb squads are out in full force, as well as plainclothes detectives who are mixed in with the crowd. I can't walk in there. They're going to shoot me on sight. I'll do it. All right. 
But you gotta get to the commissioner. Oh, I'm supposed to convince him these killings are being committed by a dead man. Commissioner Pike was chief of police when Cordell was sent to jail. He's probably the one Cordell blames more than anybody else. Where are you gonna be? I'm gonna be right here. Okay. They're ready for you in the grandstand. Oh, come on. Jerry, you'll be late. You go. Stand in for me. Tell them I'm not well enough. Look, you got to make an appearance. The press is expecting you. It'd be a slap in the face to the entire NYPD not to show. To hell with them. That's what Cordell wants me to do. Show up at the parade so he can have a clear shot at me. Look, will you stay calm? The maniac has never made a move in broad daylight or in a public place. You're going to be safer on that grandstand than in here. I'm staying here. And I want the security around me doubled. If you're dealing with a ghost, you really think that's going to keep him out? So says Commissioner, sir, that is my wife. <laughs> Look who just walked in. Jack Forrest, go for him. All right, everybody out of here. All right, so where is the son of a bitch? He's willing to give himself up after you listen. Oh, so you're giving orders now? I know who committed these murders. So do we, sweetheart. It's your boyfriend. You're wrong. It's a man named Matt Cordell. Come up with this lunatic idea by yourself or you on drugs. It was McCray's theory, but we verified it. <laughs> Listen, sweetheart, last night before McCray was murdered, he called my house. I wasn't there, I was at a charity event, but he was kind enough to leave a message on my service. Would you like to give a listen? This is Frank McCray. I've got solid evidence this homicidal maniac is getting information from inside the department. His accomplice is a female employee, a policewoman. I'll be at the Crime Records Division waiting. Call me when you get in. Of course, he couldn't have been talking about you. A policewoman. A killer's accomplice. He's talking about Sally Noland. Well, that's really great. You accuse a dead woman. When the fact is, the log states that you came to see Jack Forrest last night on alleged police business. And that you aided in his escape from the cell block. And that you helped him kill all those people. That's a lie. Why are you doing this? You know I'm telling you the truth about Cordell. Enough of this shit. I got a parade to attend. That's right, and you better go, sir. You know, everyone else is left for the reviewing stand. No, wait. You may be in danger if you go down there. Don't you understand? Cordell wants to kill you and the mayor. Is that what Forrest told you to say? If you have any sense at all, you won't go down there. Booker! Accessory to first degree murder. Thanks, Judge Commissioner. Avoid the reporters. What? I don't understand. I thought you were going to book me. Well, uh, what's the rush? I mean, we've got the Commissioner's office all to ourselves. Well, we got a place in Newburgh, you know, uh, me and the old lady. We're going to go up there. I'm happy for you. Uh, Commissioner, the time. Never mind the time. Come on. Oh. Uh, hurry up and wait, huh? Man, I can wait. Uh. put a real feather in my cap and lay it all out for me. The reason behind those killings was extortion money, wasn't it? Money had nothing to do with those killings. It was an act of vengeance against the city. You know, the truth is, darling, I could use a collar like this one. Come on, win me the big promotion. Make me a hero. If you're going to put me under arrest, I want to see my lawyer. 
You know, you got a real rotten ass attitude. Fine, let's go. I'll take you downstairs. Don't give me any trouble, huh? This is great. I don't believe this. Everybody else has gone to the parade, and I'm stuck here with you. This is fantastic. You, with your great attitude, really makes things nice. You know, I'll tell you something else. <laughs>
a sec. Let me call for a backup. This is car 4604 requesting a backup at Pier 14. Right away. It was Cordell, but it's done. The person was disfigured beyond recognition. It could have been some lunatic passing himself off as Cordell. I mean, there has to be some rational explanation. At least that's what you have to tell the public if you want to be reelected. Leave me alone. Hold all calls. I don't want to be disturbed. Have it your own way. Go easy on the bottle, Jerry. 